Here is what we're after in building the peat. We're going to have two pieces of just rectangular on the very bottom or the fifth layer. Then there's a rectangular board that's 18 inches long that is lined up or these two are lined up on the edge of that. That's the fourth layer. For the other three layers, as you're going to see, we put them together by assembling four pieces for each one. And those four pieces put in a pattern uh, after they're cut the size as it's supposed to be, create a nice mortise. And then the uh, tenon of the feet is going to go into that mortise. So this is what the foot looks like. It's five layers, just two little on an end. We're going to we're going to concave these to give a little form here. So we're just going to use a sander or some method of taking off this edge and concaving these. And then rectangular piece, three more layers, uh, and that forms our foot. We will finish it off when everything is assembled or before we do the final assembly by rounding over this edge and rounding over this edge and sanding everything up nicely and we're going to polyurethane it when it's all been assembled and actually this will look pretty cool when it gets all polyurethane and that'll be a nice heavy steady uh, foot and we're going to have obviously four of those so that's our foot build
Okay, the job in front of us at this point is to round off the ends of our feet just so that they look attractive. I don't like nice blocky thing like this. I want them more rounded off. So there's two ways you can do it. A couple ways you can, well there's many ways you can do it. What I've done is I've set my uh, saw stop saw and hopefully yours will do this as well so that you can use your table saw for this function. If it's the first time you set it at 45 degrees, make sure you make see if it clears your uh, plate because maybe if you're off alignment and then you go 45 degrees something's actually going to catch. So always check your blade by rotating it making sure that there's no encumbrance. Okay in marking up your pieces here uh, we need a round over. Now you can decide and maybe it's a good idea to learn how to use a compass if you don't remember it from seventh grade and get yourself a cheap compass off of Amazon or somewhere else and the beauty there is you can set it for any radius that you want and the way you would get a certain radius so let's say you bought a set of plans and they called for you to do a roundover of a certain type first of all normally you can do a roundover whatever whatever radius you want to or, or maybe not even worry about what the radius is or maybe you don't know what the radius is but anyway the way that you could do it with a compass is if you said hey I want to lay things out with a uh, one and a half inch radius then set your compass to one and a half inches go out and mark or you could just use a straight edge easier go, mark one and a half inches from from one end and then I'm going to show you how I don't even bother with this I just do a radius of my own choice. Put on my glasses, one and a half inches, then go down here. This is a nice two-sided ruler. Mark myself one and a half inches. Then I would put the compass on that one and a half inch point right on the edge with the point and make a little arc. And then put it on the other one and a half and make a little arc. And where those two arcs meet, then put your point on that arc and draw your circle, quarter of a circle. And that's how you'd get a certain side round over using the compass. So again, come out whatever the distance is, go down whatever the distance is, then do an arc from there and an arc from there, and then put the point on the arc and do your circle. When you drag a compass, kind of lean it and drag it. All right, but that's a big hassle. You probably won't know where you put your compass. So here's another way. It's called the uh, polyurethane way. <clears throat> so what I've done is taken a can of polyurethane. Now you notice my can's a little damaged. Like everything in my shop, I crowd too many things on my uh, storage shelf and then they eventually drop off when I'm reaching something else. But anyway, I got a good circle for a quarter of this. So I've kind of marked off up here at 12 o'clock and then over here at, at uh, 9 o'clock. So I got 90 degrees between here. That's going to be a good part of my circle. Take my uh, workpiece where I want to round off here and get those two marks, the, nine, the 12 noon and the 90 degree where they're flush on the end of the board. Take your uh, pencil. I love these Click Gear 1000s, particularly the 9 millimeter that don't break on me. And uh, although I can't use my millimeter if I'm going to use my Incra marking devices. So take your pencil and do that round over. That is called a polyurethane round over or whatever can. This is uh, polyurethane. They're all the same size. You probably got 12 of them on your shelf. You always know where they are. All right, then what you want to do is take your compass. Or uh, what do we call this? Uh, da, 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 I forgot what it called, it doesn't matter, you know what it is. Uh, and now we're going to, for once in your life, we're going to use this 45 degree angle here. So take that 45 degree angle, figure out which way you'd have to go so that you're going across the angle. This is wrong obviously, so let me flip it over. And there we go. And then with that, with that uh, handle on the edge, slide it forward toward your circle until you just touch the tip of your circle. Now you can draw 45 degrees across your workpiece. 
and that will show you what we're, what we're after here is we're after rounding this off <clears throat> so to make it easy on ourselves I don't want to do all that sanding all the way down uh, there I don't want to sand that much so I'm going to cut it off at 45 degrees and then I'll have very little round over to do to finish it off so that's what we're doing now you might be tempted <clears throat> to go over here and draw a circle on this other end but but think about it if you uh, if you do that That's the one I marked. If I let's say I draw a circle over here on this side, then I come here and I do my uh, cut using my miter sled. And what I want to do is where I did the 45 degrees, I line that up with this right hand side of the slot, which is the right edge of the blade, and I do my 45. Well, then if I try to slide it down here. The blade's going the wrong way. So what I need to do is mark this side over here and then flip it end over end. Don't, don't flip it this way. That won't do you any good because we're, we're already going to have cut that side. So mark it on this side, flip it end over end, and mark it on this side. So get my uh, polyurethane to uh, my high noon dot and my nine o'clock dot, both lined up on the edge. It doesn't matter what radius this is. The only thing that matters is are your items consistent from item to item so that you got a nice symmetrical look. So there's my polyurethane arc. Take my 90 degree or 45 degree ruler set up here. Go across that line. And then when I uh, do one cut, keep, keep your uh, table saw clear, at least this side of the fence. A lot of noise now. Here we go. So here's the triangle that I cut off. So that's perfect. There's my cut. You can see how I've cut and got right to the tip or the apex of that curve. And now all I got to do is sand down these little edges here to get down to my line. So there we go. Alright, apologize ahead of time. The audio is going to be off on here because I went to shut down the camera and realized I'd never turned this one camera on, which is kind of critical for this sequence. So anyway, I'm reshooting. I'm not going to bother to turn on the close-up camera. So we cut off the 45 degree uh, on the table saw, and that gives us the ability to get mostly to where we want to be in order to round off. So you can now round off by sand, hand, by sand, sand by hand, uh, using probably 60 grit. Uh, there's a little device here that instead of sandpaper uses a little wire mesh uh, Im impregnated with uh, some roughness and that's 60 grit. So you could spend a lot of time doing that. Hopefully if you have uh, maybe a random orbital sander that'll help you get through the process again using 60 grit. Or maybe you've got a, um, a belt sander, either a handheld or a bench top model like this. This is not very expensive. I would certainly recommend you add it to your workshop uh, as soon as you can. If you don't have one already, it'll uh, save a lot of labor. Now, it kicks out a lot of dust, and so you do want to have your dust collection system on there. Uh, and uh, that's about all I've said. And, we're just now trying to clean up our feet and get these rounded over uniformly. And you can just do that by kind of holding it on here and rotating it and rotating it against that belt. No magic. And it's going to look really cool when you get done because all those layers of that Russian birch or that Baltic birch, uh, when you polyurethane that over and you got it nice and sanded, 
that, that actually ends up looking really, really attractive. Uh, so here we are with a plywood piece, but uh, we're going to have some nice look to it. All right, so uh, I'm going to do this with the dust collection on, and I'll just do one since I forgot to capture it earlier. Let me move this over in the middle of this camera a little bit better. Get my... Uh, this is a, a big old rubber eraser. You want to get that to clean the grit on your sandpaper. And buy yourself some spare belts so that you can put them on from time to time. I see mine's getting a little thin here, but it still works awfully, awfully well. So, uh, and don't burn out your machine by pressing down too hard. Just a light path underneath your uh, workpiece is all that's needed. So, let's get her, let's get her going. Well, as you can see, it didn't take much to get that rounded over. Doing that by hand would be laborious. I'm going to go back uh, and figure out if I want to do more of it on there or if I want to kind of finish it off by hand looking for any little leftover rough spots. So anyway, no magic to that. Just sand it round and uh, you'll like the way it looks when it gets polyurethane. So this is kind of what we're after. I'm ahead of myself here, but I'm going to concave this out, and I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to cut a triangle first, maybe again on my uh, table saw, and then uh, concave it by using uh, sanding, and uh, get a little profile down here. If you want to leave it square, if you don't want it to go to the effort, this, this looks okay. Uh, we'll do one and compare it and see what looks better and decide, decide how much effort you want to go to. All right, so we'll see you on the next section. Because you've got five different layers that you're gluing together, you're going to end up with a ragged edge. I mean, probably your pieces are cut a little bit different sizes. They may have slipped around during the glue up. They might have gotten glued up and... You get all sorts of ragged edges. I know I did. Yours is probably better than mine was. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm not going to sand uh, till I'm crazy in the face. What I'm going to do, even though this is too tall for my saw blade to get all the way through, it can't reach that high. I got about a little over a three inch uh, height. So just take your miter sled, get up along the edge, and you know cut it on one part and then just flip it over and line it up as best you can and cut the other part and then if you need to flip it over and do it again just go ahead and do it again and when you're done you should be able to get a pretty darn smooth clean cut on the right hand side. The total depth doesn't really matter you're not going to take off that much in trying to achieve that and you might leave a little bit of rag, ragged edge even after that process, in which case you're just going to take it and sand it off. All right, so so that uh, that's the way to get those edges level without wearing out your arm uh, sanding. 